I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. I want to tell you a, a little story. It was 20 years ago when I was on the RTD Board of Directors, obviously the most important and, and, and biggest government in the world, and I look over at the press table, and there is this nervous woman there biting her nails terribly out of place. She doesn't know what she's doing. I decided, because I'm that kind of guy, to bring her under my wing, and I, I, can't, be, I can't be more proud of the mentorship that I gave this woman, Lynn Bartles, formerly the Rocky Mountain News, now of the Denver Post, and soon to be paid political hack as she leaves to go make real money. The reality, John, is that I, was I made you. I made you. I made you. I made you. You were nobody. People didn't even know you were funny until I told them you were funny. <laughs> I'm not funny. Yeah, you were. All Remember right. that time I was lamenting about my slow love life, which now is actually a History Channel series. But you said at the time, you screw someone every time you use your byline. And it's and true, I you. Lost and I it. didn't say screw, but you the did point, say screw. Actually, no, I dropped the f bomb. No, you did not. Really? You said screw. I don't think I've ever heard you laugh so much. Oh, it's helpless. Good. Yes. All right. You're leaving. I you know. can't leave. That's what everybody says. There are so, there there are no reporters that have institutional knowledge of Colorado politics, uh, whether it's on the uh, um, you know I, Vince Carroll I think's got a great historical memory as an editorialist, but those on the reporting side, no, there's nobody there. There was John Sanko. You know, right now, it's a whole bunch of minimum wage kids who have well, just Well, that's not true. Charles Ashby, he's actually the dean of the press corps. Charles right, has been right. there for everything. But I'm talking at the Denver Post, the, the flagship, the big paper. Between we, have the new, we have new people on the beat. New people on the beat. Children. You have children Joey on Bunch the beat. Joey Bunch is not a child. He just was oh, new to the political if, beat. If, then you don't know Joey. Yeah. He is most definitely a child. But you know what I'm saying. There, I know what really, you're saying. There, there, there aren't as many long-term reporters that have that history. Why did you make this call to retire as a reporter? Well, you know, it's weird. Had the Denver Post not offered buyouts, I, you wouldn't be having me here on this show today because I wouldn't have thought about leaving. In part, you're always like, you know, over the years, you're like, oh, all the hours, the this, the pay, I've got to leave. And they finally offered you some cash. And, but I was, who would hire me? I mean, who would hire me, right? Everybody would hire well, you. Well, I didn't know that until someone said, you should talk to somebody about a job. And then word got out and people called me and it was fascinating. But people are shocked by where I'm going. Tell everyone where you're going. I'm going to be the spokesperson for the Colorado Secretary of State, which is not like the U.S. Department of State. <laughs> Because people go, I can't see you doing foreign policy. <laughs> you don't even know barely who the president of the United States is. You know? So you're going to be the paid hack for Wayne Williams, our secretary of state. Correct. What a coup for him. What, what did he have that all the other people who wanted to hire you didn't have? A sense of humor, uh, a state job that was some security and better hours. You know, I weighed other options, and my family intervened like you can't believe because they just have seen me work these hours and I have no boundaries, I can't control myself. I'll go to something and be up to one in the morning blogging it and they're like, I just, you need to slow down and maybe this will force you to slow down and look at life yeah, more normally. It's a government job, you're gonna slow well, down. You know, you kn I called my mother to warn her, my very democratic mother, to warn her I was going to work for a Republican and she said, oh, the prayer chain worked. I mean, she was thrilled for it. She was thrilled that you got a government job. She was thrilled that I'm slowing down. Whatever job I took, she wanted better hours. You're, you're going to hate it. You're going to hate it. You don't it. know that. You're going to be putting out press releases. You're going to want to say things about controversies, but you won't be able to because you'll be a public information officer. I, I. You're going you're gonna, to be there at the, on, on, on Twitter, and your fingers are going to oh, start I know. hurting. I ah. even said. You guys are going to have to handcuff me when it comes to Twitter. And I love, this is during my interview, they said, maybe not. So you have to love people who are like that going, hmm, maybe this is a good thing. They're right. a good crew. I, it, it felt good. Are you surprised by the outpouring of all of us in, in politics, around politics, throughout the state, left, right, middle? I mean, it, everyone is saddened by, by I'm your retirement. stunned by it. And... I'm actually kind of honored, too, that Mike Kaufman, Republican, is as upset as Morgan Carroll, Democrat, who's going to challenge him. Both sides are saying don't leave. 
And why do you think that is? I think I've always tried to be really fair, and I haven't always been, sadly. And yeah, I've yeah, I know. been on well, the other side on of you. That. Oh, you're so full of it. Oh, no, because you like me. The only way you can handle liking me is by trashing me more in the paper. I know. People always said that she's meaner to Republicans because she wants to show that she doesn't yeah. like them yeah, exactly. as much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the years. Now, but, I mean, it really is across the spectrum. It's that no matter where we are when we're fighting all these battles and we're always fighting each other, right. there's a respect that you've been around, you know the stories, you like to get the stories, and you're a junkie. You're a political junkie I am a political like the, re junkie. the rest of us. And there's not many of us here, and it's a, it's a terrible a addiction. I am a political junkie. Why? That's, I just find it's fascinating. I love it. Look at RTD. They were like, oh, hey, you can go cover RTD, just call. Remember how that yeah. was? Just, just call, call and after ask. after the meeting, what and happened? After the, and so I started going over there, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is the greatest place on earth. And there was all those stories, <laughs> dialing for dollars when Ben Klein lost his cell phone a month, and nobody thought a thing that taxpayers were paying for that. Oh, those were fun days. Those were good I know, times. it's never in the news anymore. No, because there's no reporters. Trust me, RTD is just as wasteful and dysfunctional as ever, but there's nobody there to report it. There are no beats. Yeah, it's hard. There isn't. I mean, I was telling somebody, when I came here, there were, there were, the Post and Rocky each had two city hall reporters, and they each had a special reporter assigned to DIA. That's a lot right. of government coverage. And they, and they had transportation reporters. Well, they only hired a transportation after reporter you. after I started showing up at RTD. And got all those fun stories. Oh, remember, I basically told city hall, see ya, I'm going to yeah. go cover RTD. Like, Why would you cover a transit agency? All right, let's... Let's, let's do a little This Is Your Life, if okay. you don't mind. So you've, you've been a reporter for 35 years, mm -hmm. which is amazing that you're 42 years old, <laughs> and you've been doing this, this a while. What was the first gig? The Gallup Independent in Gallup, New Mexico. Ah, uh, the flagship. That's my first Washington place. Washington Post, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and the Gallup Independent. The fire station was right across the street from the newspaper, and when I used to cross the street, they'd blow the whistle. That was 80 pounds in light years ago, but it was quite <laughs> fun. <laughs> why, why did you want to be a reporter? You know, I think part of it was the whole Watergate. I mean, I, that was a huge influence on me. First of all, I was a big Nixon person because my dad was a big Nixon person. And so I felt so betrayed by that. And so Watergate was the thing. And my dad always, I have a story, the Colorado Independent did a story where as a kid I was like, who, who, who are you talking about? Always. So it... I actually went to college to be a teacher. I think there are a lot, of, I I lot of I went to college to be a teacher. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Could you imagine those poor children? And every year at oh, June, I think horrific. two roads diverged, and I, I, I messed up, I, you know. Oh, you would have been an awful teacher. I would have been fired oh within God. the first five years. Timmy, shut the hell up. Right, right, right. 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 XL Energy right. once said, you should apply for a job. And I go, as what? And they said, a spokesperson. I said, I can't be a spokesperson and be like, yeah, your electricity's out. Look outside. Okay. There's a blizzard, you idiot. Yeah. Click, and they go, you're hired. Nice. Yeah, so that's why I'm going to worry about oh, yeah. poor Wayne's right. so going to have a after, management problem. After Gallup. I went to Albuquerque. Ooh, is, is, that a, is that an increase or a decrease? Is that a step up or a step well, down? Well, Albuquerque is, uh, is like Big? one of the two Albuquerque Tribune. I was the city columnist there. I, when I left, they threw a big going away party for me. It was above the, above the fold. You know, it was a big story. I was wow. syndicated through Scripps Howard. It's kind of like people say, why are you going to the Secretary of State's office? I was a syndicated columnist, and people go, she's coming to the Rocky right. to do night cops? There's so really, some you, secret you story You actually haven't worked for that many newspapers, which is unusual for reporters. They get bounced around. Um, uh, they'll do a couple years here, and then they'll bounce over there and do a few years, and then a few years over right. here. I and mean, so, I was a so forced you, you departure from... You did two papers in... The Independent, the Tribune, and then I came to the Rocky, the Rocky, and that was a forced departure. Because they went under. Right, to the Post, who were wonderful in picking me up. I know Wayne was looking at my resume, which I had hastily put together because I was like, resume? And then he goes, <laughs> well, I, I don't want someone who's going to get hired and leave right away, but... I see that you really don't you, leave. You don't you know? leave. Like a good head cold, you just stick around. That's right. All right, let's talk a little dirt. Because you've got all these years. I know. You, and I know there are people you love, and I know you, the people, other than me, of course. Who did you enjoy covering the most? Who was the most fun? Actually, I have to tell you this. I love covering lots of them. And that's that first session that I had, I'm not 
when I, I'm not making this up, I cried almost every day for two weeks and they're like, maybe we should pull her out. I don't think this is gonna work. And then one day, like three weeks later, it felt like I knew everybody. And then I cried the last night of the session because it was over. Because of that first session, it felt so magical. They all were kind of downhill after that, but that you, first you one. You really have issues, lady. You well, got some I loved, serious okay, problems. I loved Owens, I loved his people. I love the Republicans, I love the Democrats. It was just such high, it's Gold Dome High School. Oh, it is, and it's you a get junior a high school. Right, but you, you, you get to live it without being through it. You get and, it right on it. I mean, you enjoy sharp-tongued people on both sides. I mean, that's why quoting Dick Wadhams is great and Mike Feely is great. Right. You, know, you, you love it. All right, who is the stupidest person you've ever covered? You are crazy. Come on. No. Come on, you're not working for him any longer. I'm working for the Denver Post till July 28th. You got a week. That's it. Right. You know, the biggest thing is I have to say, I wish I could have actually, when you talk about people trusting you, I've sat on so many great stories because people begged you and I probably shouldn't have, but they're like, please, can you? Not run it. Right. And Why didn't you ever do that for me? John, you're poor. You did not whip out your billfold enough. No, I just, I'm not, you know, yes, I have... I delight in going after people, but not in that way sometimes. You do like gotcha stories. This is, Give me an example. Oh, I don't know. You, you, you love to see somebody said this, but they did the opposite. I mean, that's... You, you've what, I love, what I love doing in the blog is pointing out things. For example, when Hickenlooper hired Joe Neguse and Irv uh, Halter, two pe- Democrats who had run and lost, Peak politics, my buddies at the Republican blog did, oh, it's the Democratic lottery, look at you hire these losers, you know, they bring them in. So I pointed out a blog point pointing out that John Southers lost for attorney general and became the correction secretary for Bill Owens. Tom Norton lost the Republican nomination to Owens and became the transportation director. So it's the same thing. That's what I love calling out. And but that's what I what I talk about institutional knowledge, right. that's what, well, as, as a consumer, as right. a reader, as a politico, even even when you turn your guns in my direction, I miss, it's, there are, there's nobody left that I'm aware of that has 20 years of reporting politics in Colorado. Well, you'll love this because Mike Litwin calls me Rain Man, but without the math skills. Because <laughs> I'll do those, well, in 2010. Um, right, for, wait, wait, wait a minute, for those, those who don't know, I get these calls sometime, you know, it's like around deadline with these stupidest questions. It's not like, hey, can I have a quote on this? It is. All right, all right, so there's cuts. There's 100 students in the school, and they're going to cut, they said, 25. So that's that's 58%, right? It's the I've, percentages where I struggle. Yeah, so I, after dealing with RTD, I, I wanted to get a huge sign, that big caution sign, just says caution, journalists doing math. Oh, I've yeah, never, warning, journalists doing yeah, math. I've never seen, I've never seen a, a profession of mathematically illiterate people. I know, which t- frightened the crap out of you when I was covering Ref C. Yeah. Because I'd be like, really? Yeah, it's, it does, it's, it's it does of, change that? It does change, well, it does? By how much, what? Wait, permanent tax cuts, what are those? <sighs> anyway, so you anyway. can't do math. I can't do math, but I have a weird memory for strange things. In 2010, when Mike Kaufman endorsed Tom Tancredo for governor, when he was running at the third party, uh, Fender at our paper wrote a blog on it. And then I said, hey, they had this big falling out back before. They weren't always best friends. And she goes, well, what should I do? I go, just write a separate blog. And I didn't know what Twitter was then. And she said she tweeted out, hat tip. Said something, they right. weren't always BFFs, hat tip. To Bartles. Bartles. to Bartles, and Brophy emailed her and said, damn her and her memory. Well, it was the same thing when right. Morgan Carroll announced she was running, and everybody's like, oh, she's just a liberal. And Sure, she's got the trial lawyer stuff, she's got this, but I remember this speech she gave where people were just enamored about seatbelts, why it shouldn't be a primary offense. And when she got done, this Republican lawmaker said to me, the hair in my arm stood up. When I have a Democrat talking about the Constitution, it was this guy named Cory Gardner. And people go, how did you know about that? And they go, oh, I wrote the story. When? 2006, when it happened. They're like, oh my God. I go, yeah, meanwhile, my iron's on and my house is burning down, but I can remember that. See, I, I just have a sense. Uh, I, I heard that Johnny Carson used to write jokes for Letterman after he retired. Uh-huh. Why do I have a feeling, instead of doing whatever the hell we taxpayers will be paying you for, you're going to be calling up reporters with, with little tips on stories that have nothing to do with I the I already have State. doled out three tips to people. 
they want like, hey, I get in line for your tips, I get in line. What I really, I, I don't know, I think it'll be fun. And, and we'll find Stop out. Stop thinking about yourself. We don't care about your personal life. I know. We don't care about your health. I need a reporter <laughs> that actually has some memory around here. My so sister said, who cares about Colorado journalism? It's time you cared about yourself. <sighs> I know. I, I have this feeling that, um, that I'm going to be sitting there going, you know, that scene Kramer versus Kramer. If I don't like it, can I come home? <laughs> and <laughs> You probably can. They'd hire you back. All right. They might make me pay back the buyback, the buyout, though. How, how big is the buyout? For me, I haven't been there that long. I didn't ask you if you've been there that long. I've asked. So how, how big? I is never it? asked you how big your buyout was. Uh, <laughs> I, I, if it was twenty bucks, I'd take it. No, is, is it is, is you're going to be able to live comfortably if if? They no, did? that's why I have another job lined up. If I could live comfortably. I mean, no, somebody you said. You know what I mean. I, mean, I know, but somebody said, "Is this your like hundreds of thousands of dollars no, to buy you out?" No, somebody says, "Lamborghini." Is, is this your dream job? And I go, "Working at the Secretary of State's office." And they you're go, "You're gonna be, you're gonna be one of the little old ladies over the counter when I come in there and file forms and petitions." No, That's hell it. no. Those little old ladies are gonna call me and say, "The devil's here. Come over." I'm going to be handing in petition forms to you from now on. Yes, yes, because you have enjoyed ruining Colorado with your ballot measures. Oh, it's going to be and now beautiful. I have to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. I have a few more days. Now, now you'll, you'll, and you'll I have can't, to... I can't be like, these people who turn in ballot measures are destroying our state. Oh, it's going to be, be wonderful. Thank you. I'm going to love thank it. you, Mr. Caldera. May I have another? May I have another? How, we'd be happy to help you, sir. Who's, who's the best editor you worked with? Uh, John Temple, who was the big, big editor. Um, At the Rocky Mountain right, News. Right, but he was my city editor in Albuquerque. Oh, really? Yeah, he hired me to come up here. Oh, they, 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 that It's great, sense. you got to come you up. You got to come so up here. When I came, you know, I told you I hate he change. He was a fiery, competitive editor. Yes, John, I always say John Temple and Dan Haley had, like, more news judgment in their little fingers than most people ever have in a lifetime. He was my best editor as overall, as far as that. All right, let's, let's talk a little bit about the news business. You've always no. been really good and that on the record when we ask you about, so what's going on at the Post? You know, well, it's just fine, we're doing this. You're out of there. You signed the contract. Let's have the dirt. It sucks to see this wonderful two newspaper town turn into one newspaper. It sucks to see that one newspaper turn into a newsletter and now to see that 20 people are leaving. is 22. 22. It, it, it just, it's like the incredible shrinking woman. It just Well, that going. was one of my considerations, because like I said, I, I wasn't originally even going to take the buyout. But then I thought, I have this two-week vacation already scheduled. I come back, and what's left in the newsroom? The hardest thing for me making the decision is, I'm in a really great space right now at the Post. They're wonderful to me. They had me sign this, cover the Senate race, even though, of course, I said, oh, my God, I'm not going to like it. Don't have me do it. That was wonderful. I mean, people have told me, you gave this newspaper national stature with all your stories and your questions. Well, it was the hottest race in the country. And oh, it was, it was unbelievable. It was, and it was, it was an incredible upset. Well, what I think was interesting is people told me, you know, I had that story in September that said if the Colorado Senate race were a movie, the set would be a gynecologist table complete with an exam, <laughs> or gyne office complete with an exam right. and stirrups. They said that Republicans naturally sent that to everybody and said, see, and then the coverage started focusing on these women's issues. And when you tweeted out Mark Uterus. I didn't tweet that out. I, I said it during our debate, which was worse, because was it? it was during our debate. Between the two? Yes. Now, you didn't come up with Mark Uterus. No, Amy, I had it in, I had it in our profile. Like three days earlier, Amy Stevens told me that people were calling him Mark Uterus. And you know, that question was added at four o'clock because we said, we have to ask this tough social issues question of Cory Gardner. And I said, well, then we have to ask the tough social issues question of Udall. It has to be samey, samey, you know? So at four o'clock, we came up with that. That was the debate. The Gardner people were really upset after the debate and it felt like they hadn't got enough tickets to the debate and how dare this and that. Then they go back and they call their political people. And D said, the only thing that matters is Mark Uterus. That's the Mark only Uterus. thing. But, and by the way, you know how a, a, a picture can, can speak a thousand words? Mm -hmm. That term that Amy, Amy Stevens came up with, which wouldn't have gone into the lexicon, summed up the campaign perfectly, Mark Uterus. And once that word was out there, 
That, that felt, was the death nail. I felt sick about it. What was this incredible? Why did you feel sick about it? Well, I actually really like Mark Udall a lot. I think Mark Udall was a good senator. I think he did a lot for Colorado. It was just such a throwaway. If it had been his mistake, or but it was me kind of pegging him, it was this strange week in October because our debate is Tuesday night, and you have Mark Uterus. And then Thursday, they released the fundraising numbers, and and so Cory Gardner outraised Udall, and then Friday was the editorial, which where the newspaper endorsed Cory. And so it was just the week, and nothing, I mean, after that, it was just slow and steady. But the power, the power of, of that. Of those two of, words, Oh, yeah, Mark those Uters. two words. Well, at first, I spent hours tracking down, like, news organizations that said, Lynn Bartles called him Mark Uters, and I go, I didn't call him that. I was calling him something that somebody else said. Later, somebody said, hey, be proud, be yeah, whatever. Take... It's always made me feel uneasy, because I really do think, uh, I'm not. Well, Mark's a good guy. There's right. no, I don't. But you know, and so is Corey. You know and, what? And, I Corey and I go back to 2002. That's the point, woman. Oh. Pay attention. You know, you all. He used to be in the legislature. You. I wasn't there then. But but you've known him for years, and you know Corey Gardner I'm, from when he was in the legislature. Not, well, from the legislature, but prior to that, because he worked on Corey's campaign and Ellard's campaign. And in fact, I'm one of the people who, when Corey got in the race, said. This guy's gonna win. Right, I, think. I, I know you're you're like thinking about your own damn retirement and all this money you're gonna make and all the nice easy hours you're gonna be, you know, clocking out. Listen, I remember being at RTD. At at five o'clock, it's like somebody called in a bomb threat. People would just run out of that building. So all right, I understand this is all good for you. But the point is, I don't see anybody else coming in and doing what you've been able to do for the last twenty years here. Do you? Probably. Who? Hey, when I left Albuquerque, they were like, who could ever do mm -hmm. it? Oh, she left, and it's not going to be the same. Well, what's the hardest time as a reporter here over these the decades? Le when the Rocky closed. Why? That was my family. It was psychologically so hard, and we just felt our owners had really messed with this, screwed with this on that. And that was just psychologically kind of a nightmare, and my first year up here. I mean. You come up here, you're like, what have I done? Um, that first spring here. What do you mean, first year you come here? Well, because I don't like change. I came from this great state, New Mexico, and everybody. You were, you were here for years before the Rocky closed. I know, but you said my worst. You uh, said okay. the hard. Oh, okay. It was okay. hard coming up here the first year you were here. Right, because I miss New Mexico so much. and and. Um, How tough was this decision? Oh, my God. Because I no. know. I've talked. This was a. This, I know. This you was called hard. me. You called me. Poor Josh Penry bore the brunt of it because he, I thought I'd lost my car because I couldn't remember parking somewhere. I was so rattled, what do I do? And then he called and he said, so what'd you decide? And I was just like, I don't think, I think I cried that hard the day my dad died. And I just, I couldn't even take a breath. I was crying so hard about, I don't, I, I, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then, and, and, and Wayne Williams, you know, he's like, can I have an answer by then? I go, no, and then he's, I'll give it to you by Monday. And then I'd be like, no, I can't, I can't decide. And, and then I finally accept the job. And then the next day I send him a little message on text and say, uh, hold on, something's come up. And, I can't do it. And I'm still like that back and forth. And then that afternoon I text him again and say, do you still want me or are you gonna kill me? And he, he texts back both with a smiley face. And I, I mean, just those things sort of affirm, you're like, okay, I made the right decision. But then I went home that night and I was like, okay, what have I done? And I go down and talk to my sister and I said, I don't know, I might look at this other opportunity instead. And they're like, no, you're not going to. Your damn you sister is ruining the state. I know, she is. So, and, so even the next day, then I call Dick Wadhams and I say, okay, here's, here's, he goes, so did you make your decision? and. And I had talked to him when there were other opportunities ages ago, and I go, oh, I'm beyond those, you know. So he was like, oh my God, no, you're making the wrong. So all weekend I was in knots, like have I done the right thing? But I guess when Wayne sent out the press release about that I was joining him, and it was his quote that said, her sense of humor, I'm like, oh my God, I'm working for somebody that gets me. now. He might yeah, <laughs> we'll, get yeah, in there. We'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see if he thinks how we're, funny is that now. We got, we got we got a pool going, so of how long how long you last there. Scott so. Gessler said I'd last six weeks. Oh no, you'll make it longer than that. You, you might make it to eight, and then 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 buyer's remorse comes in. No, what somebody said is the second you see 
Bennett having a really good competitor and it gets oh. juicy, then you're going to say, I'm in, who wants me? But I actually didn't want the Senate race. I wanted the CD6 with, with Kaufman and, and, and Carol. I think that's great. I mean, I always, right. covering CD7 with Perlmutter. Only about a minute left here, but. Future governor, the other, Perlmutter, I think. Maybe the other that's thing, when I'll get back The other in. thing that you brought, you did this much more at the Rocky because there, there, there was more ink back then, but you made politicians in, into people that they weren't just their votes and they weren't just their quotes. Right. You, you did profiles of them and, and you, would, you would report on the jokes they made because they're funny there. And you know, and I'll, I'll say this again, you reported on my daughter when I lost her mm -hmm. and you were there and not only a good friend, but I mean, and talk about it being real when, I, when you wrote about it and, and it, was, it was real. And you kept with it even afterwards. You followed some stories of people who who helped me, and I I want to thank you for that. And you have mm -hmm. a picture of my daughter on, on your desk, and I. Well, it's funny because people always go, "Oh my God, your daughter is so cute, those blue eyes." And I go, "That's John Caldera's daughter," and they go, "It is." It is. Sort of How like, could he have a beautiful <laughs> daughter? They're like, "Wow." But I mean, you've been around during those things on I know, a really human level. I love the people level. part, their birthdays, their weddings, their great one-liners. Where are you going to be on election night, 2006, to a Republican in the fetal position under my bed? <laughs> you know, you, you can't get you can't quotes like that. I got to run. We're going to miss you. Thank you. I hate it. Hate it. I take it personally. Have my boss on and be good to I him. I will do it. Hey, tune in next week. Tell a friend. We'll see you soon.